Before we start this video, a large thank you to Nathan, Richard, Arn, and Roy for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner, Earn, and James for their continued massive support of the channel this month on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello, gentlemen. A viewer notified me that your AI doesn't actually kill the target when it kills you. So let's make sure that happens. Go to your combat stand state and let's just set the uh, AI current targets to null if its current target is dead. That way when you respawn, it's not instantly coming at you again. Something I forgot to do in the past, but you want to put this on the combat stand state ideally right before you check for a null target to go back to the idle state. All right, cool. So we have some housekeeping things to do today. Um, I was also reminded that we actually technically aren't finished the AI boss because a long time ago uh, we made this awakened state, but we don't actually include it uh, in our resetting all characters. So we're gonna make it the day so when you die the boss event clears and when you're resting in a site of grace uh, or die we're gonna reset uh, the boss event. So start by going to the world AI manager and make a void for disable all boss fights and then do a for loop for all your spawn in bosses. And what you want to do is say if spawn in bosses i is equal null simply continue. Uh, for some reason if a boss gets deleted or something in the middle of your game shouldn't happen but just in case we're going to say spawn in bosses i dot boss fight is active dot value is equal to false. So this will trigger the uh, on boss fight is active changed function. And this is going to get rid of the boss music, I believe. But I don't think it gets rid of the HP bar because I think the only way we're doing it right now is if it gets set to zero. So over on is dead changed on the player network manager. What you want to do next is say if the player is dead dot value. And we're just going to check to see if the player is host. You could say player dot is host, or you could say network manager. Make sure you're using unity dot net code up here. Uh, we're going to say network manager dot singleton dot is server. Now, important note here: if you're doing this like Elden Ring, this is where you want to kick every other cooperative player in your game if the host dies. If you're not doing it like Elden Ring, we'll just go ahead and do things a bit differently. Like this is a breaking point of where you need to decide what you want to do. So I'm going to go world AI manager dot instance dot disable all boss fights. And again, if you're not doing like Elden Ring, you only want to disable all these boss fights if everybody is dead. But since Elden Ring does this, I'm just going to do it like Elden Ring. I'm not going to kick everybody right here right now, but this is also where you'd want to do it. So this is just a pretty simple thing to do. You just want to go and basically disconnect everyone who's connected to you. But if you want to do multiplayer a bit differently in Elden Ring, and you want to make it so the boss fight can continue. Do not disable the boss fight if the host is dead. Check to see if every player in the game is dead, and if they are, then disable it. But like I said, since this is called Elden Ring and Unity, we're going to continue on and do it as if Elden Ring, or the way Elden Ring does it. So we're going to disable all the boss fights, and I'm going to make a note here for the future. Kick all of your cooperative players. Okay, what's next? Well, we're going to save that. We're going to jump over to the player UI HUD manager, and we're going to store a private UI boss HP bar for your current boss health bar. Now, if you're doing multiple boss fights at once, multiple HP bars, you can just make an array or a list here and store multiple. But basically what we want to do is make sure that we're clearing out every HP bar when the character dies. So we can do that by getting a copy of where we instantiate this. And if you look over here on, on boss fight is active changed, we're actually creating a boss HP bar variable here to basically enable it. Well, let's also store that under the player UI manager instance dot HUD manager. And then we're going to say current boss health bar is equal to the boss HP bar. So we're doing this because what we want to do is when the character dies or if the character dies in the boss fight, we actually want to obviously get rid of this health bar. So again, on is dead changed, and I'm only gonna do this if we are the server, because if you're a cooperative phantom and you kick it, um, maybe you just wanna keep the health bar on the screen just as you're fading out for some more dramatic effect. So we're gonna say player UI manager instance HUD manager current boss health bar. First, we should check to see if it's not null just in case, uh, because you're not always gonna have a boss HP bar when you die, maybe you just died to a random character. Then we're gonna say boss, current boss health bar, and we call this function remove HP bar, and we have a timer. So I'm just gonna set the timer to one. You can set it to zero if you want, so it's instant, but this will be the time it takes before this boss uh, HP bar will basically get deleted off of your screen. All right, cool, so we have a way to stop the music now, we have a way to get rid of the HP bar. Cool, I'm just gonna make a comment here. This removes the boss HP bar from the UI. Very good. Now, save it, go to your character manager. For some reason I had don't destroy on load on awake, that should not be there. So remove that. And then we're gonna go, if you have it there, that is. And then we're gonna jump over to the idle state. And you can see here we have sleep until disturbed. Let's just copy everything in there and then go to the boss sleep state. So I'm gonna paste this in here, but we're gonna change it a little bit. But for now, let's just take it as it is. 
So we can go get the sleeping animations and the waking animations because if you remember back when we made the boss awakened, we didn't actually have a sleep state. So we kind of did it a bit differently. But now we can uh, integrate it into our logic and use this uh, and we're going to do things a little bit differently again. Because in Elden Ring and Dark Souls, a lot of times you only play the initial awaken animation one time. It's when you first see the boss. Not all the time, but most of the time. So under wake boss, we're also going to say AI character network manager dot is awake dot value is equal to true. This is under the wake boss function in AI boss character manager. So after we do that, we can kind of move on here and set this up so it's only going to happen one time. So for that to happen, we need to go to the boss sleep state and we make a public bool for has been awakened already. And defaultly, this is set to false. So we're gonna have two functions we're gonna run here. One, if the boss has been awoken already, meaning you've attempted to fight the boss and failed. And one, if you haven't even seen it yet. So if you haven't even seen it yet, it's gonna play its cool animation where it's sleeping and waking up. And if you've already fought in it, then it's probably gonna be standing there waiting for you. And this is again, if you want it to behave like Dark Souls slash Elden Ring, this is what happens some of the time. So. We're going to say pub private, sorry, AI state has been awakened and private AI state has not been awakened. We're going to copy the logic we initially pasted in here and we're going to paste that under has not been awakened. Now we're going to say if we have not been awakened, we're going to return the has not been awakened function we just created. Otherwise, we're going to return the has been awakened function we just created. So this is just again, this logic is really only for if you want to only do this cool get up slash awaken thing one time. Works well too if you set up a cutscene with it. You only want to play that you know animation through this whole sequence one time. Not necessary, but Elden Ring and Dark Souls does do it, so I'm going to do it in a series. Now, if you have already been awakened, we don't want to really do anything. Uh, we don't want to play any animation. We just want to set the character to awakened being true. So we're just going to say AI character network manager is awake is equal to true, and then we're going to switch to the pursue target state. Uh, this is if we have a target and we're not awake. So just to make a comment up here so it's clear, if the boss has already, how am I gonna say this? If the boss has already been initially woken up, like it plays that first time sequence, we don't want to replay the first time waking animations or sequence. So if we have already been woken up, we're just gonna go straight to the has been awakened. All right, very good, let's save that. Let's go to the AI boss character manager. All right, now that we're here, we can go down to on network spawn. What you want to do now is right where we're doing a check for uh, awaken in our save files. We're going to say sleep state dot has been awakened is equal to has been awakened dot value. All right, let's save that. Now let's go back over to the boss sleep state and we're going to say AI character dot nav mesh agent dot enable equal false at the top. Don't want to have that enabled while we're in the state. And now we're going to go over to the AI character spawner. Now we're gonna go down to reset character. And we're just gonna check here if the AI character is a boss character by saying if AI character is AI boss character manager. So we're basically saying if the AI character manager scripts is this. We're gonna say AI boss character manager variable boss is equal to AI character as AI boss character manager. And then we're gonna say boss dot current state is equal to switch state boss and we're going to say boss.sleep state. All right, cool. Let's go to the AI boss character manager. Make sure your sleep state is public, by the way. I'm not sure if I had that done on video. I think I was testing something and might not have done that on video. So let's go back over here again now and say boss.ai character network manager dot is awake dot value is equal to false. So basically we're putting the character back to sleep. Make sure you do this before you switch to the state. Save that. And now I'm going to correct this. Sorry, this is supposed to be boss current state is equal to. Make sure you put the equal to sign. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to do that and went and debugged my code. I want to realize that it's not actually going to change the state unless I do this. You can't just say switch state. You have to say current state is equal to because this will return the state. All right, say that again. Now, also, we also need to go just right above here before we leave. And we're going to say boss.sleep state dot has been awakened is equal to whatever the has been awakened is on the boss character. Okay, now we should be good. All right, let's jump to the world game session manager. Under revive host code routine, you can see we never actually reset our characters. I don't think we had the reset function at the time. This a lot of the stuff came after, like back when we first fought the boss, we just died, so we didn't remove the HP bar. So world AI character instance dot reset all characters. But yeah, back when we made the boss, uh, we had no way to revive the characters, so there was no reason to clear off the HP bar when the character died. So now if I go and make a brand new character, let's go and just do night, go in the game. I got the scene view here so you can see that Dirk is sitting down as he should be because I have not encountered him yet on this, on this profile. 
so if I go and just run in here real fast, uh, I'm just going to go through here and then I'm going to set my HP to zero so it kills the character. And I have my volume disabled so you can't have the boss track. Uh, so now when I respond, he should not be sitting. Good. So yeah, he is standing because he's already been woken up. We're not playing that sequence anymore. Very good. So if I rest here again, I'm just going to reset him again just to make sure. And yes, he's still just standing. So there we go. Now the boss character is integrated into the reset process. And now the reset process happens when your character dies. So I have a couple more things I want to cover before we move on, but I'm going to tell you the game plan now. Uh, so a Patreon requested that we cover dodging for AI, which I will cover, and also uh, parrying and reposting for AI, which I definitely can cover if you guys want to see that. Just comment below. Um, and also, we're going to move on then to a thing I polled in the Discord. I asked a few options, but what beat everything out was level streaming, basically, or world streaming, sorry. So when I say this, what I mean is large open worlds aren't really one scene. They're a combination of multiple smaller scenes within a default scene. So as you're walking through Elden Ring, the whole world isn't loaded at once. It loads pockets of the world in while keeping like a lot of the base things around you loaded in at all times. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna learn how to load and unload areas in the world as we need them to save memory. Uh, this is what I do in Nephilim as well. It is very helpful uh, and you kind of need to do it for any game that's reasonably big. So we're gonna do this through the network scene manager and we're gonna make a system to load certain scene setups and scenes around those scenes that you would see uh, as we need them. And when I say this, I mean basically if you're standing, for example, on a cliff and this is scene one, but from this cliff, you can see scene two, three, and four, then I need to load those scenes as well, or I need to load uh, an imitation of those scenes, because it would look kind of silly if we only loaded in the cliff, and then everything around the cliff that you could normally see is just non-existent. So I'll explain all this in greater detail. It's going to require some uh, basically custom work on your end, depending on how your world is set up, but what I'm gonna show you will translate to anything that you're going to do. So again, just to be clear, what I'm trying to say is if I load in scene one in my world, which also requires me to load in scene two and three, in your world, loading in your scene one might require your scenes four and five. It's going to be different depending on how your world sits around itself. But yeah, don't worry about that for now. It will all be very, very clear when we get into it. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new, and I hope you have a very fantastic weekend. Thank you so much to everyone who chooses to support my work on Patreon. It is because of you guys the series exists at all. And thank you very much to those of you who take the time to like this video, share it around, and leave a comment. You have my sincerest gratitude. I will see you guys next week.